When one of our students started the school's Gay-Straight Alliance, Tim agreed to serve as faculty advisor because he knew how impactful it would be to have a football coach involved. That was a snippet from Tim Wall's introduction before his DNC speech, and I think that by now it's pretty well known that he started a gay-straight alliance in 1999 at Mankato High School, but I did want to take some time to dig a little bit deeper and explore that part of his past, because when you look into his past, you really begin to understand that he wasn't just merely supportive of his LGBTQ plus students. He actually took the time to mentor them and offer them guidance that profoundly changed their lives. And to say that he was supportive is an understatement because this man was basically a second parent to his queer students. And an underreported part of the story is that his wife, Gwen, was equally as impactful at the time. And this was at a time when it was very popular to hate gay people. Even other teachers weren't interested in overtly supporting LGBTQ plus students because it was just toxic, right? But both Tim and Gwen they were supportive anyway, and the stories from their former queer students are genuinely touching. So I want to start with Jacob Wrighton. So he knew Tim Walls because of the Gay Straight Alliance, but Gwen was actually his teacher. Now, in the clip that you're about to see, he's going to explain his experience as one of her students. I came out, I was the first openly gay student at Mankato West High School, and I came out in 1999. Uh, in 1997, though, I had a class with Gwen Walls. She taught... Uh, English literature. And on the first day of class, uh, she stood up and said that this was a safe place for LGBT students. It meant the world to me. I had never heard a teacher uh, from the front of the classroom talk about gay and lesbian issues. My heart was literally beating out of my chest. And so when I came out two years later, uh, the first person I told was a friend, the second person I told was my sister, and the third person I told was Gwen Walls. Mm. Both Tim and Gwen were incredibly supportive of uh, their gay students. Uh, and um, they modeled values of inclusivity and respect. Um, and uh, that helped not just me, I, I was bullied in high school, it helped not just me, but it also, I think, helped the bully. It, it showed the bully a better path forward. I cannot tell you how astonishing it is that his wife was that openly supportive of gay students in 1997. In that same year, Minnesota lawmakers passed a bill banning same-sex marriages, but yet she was there saying, I support you. This is a safe classroom for you. She risked being ostracized. She risked being outcasted for doing so, but she did it anyway because she cared. Now, he mentioned that he was bullied, but the extent to which he was bullied is genuinely shocking. As the New York Times explains, after rumors began to circulate about Rayton being gay, he was actually threatened, and the F slur was written in giant letters and chalk in his driveway, and his mom started getting ominous letters about him, one of them saying that he'd be better off dead. Also, his car windows were even smashed in the school parking lot. So, he went through hell. Now, on top of that, when he came out to his parents, they took him to see their pastor and he told them that being gay was sinful and that God could help him become straight, of course, right? Now, thankfully, his parents were seemingly supportive, but he disagreed with his parents about whether or not he should come out. He wanted to come out and, and his parents did not want him to come out. Now, it doesn't seem like they wanted him to stay in the closet for homophobic reasons. The reason why they were horrified is because they heard about the story in 1998 of Matthew Shepard being murdered. He was an openly gay college student that was killed and they didn't want to see their son suffer the same fate. So, I mean, that makes sense if you're a parent, right? So it was a devastating time all around where he wanted to come out, but was genuinely fearful for his life for good reason. But Gwen Walls helped him come out during this time, and Tim Walls was there for him to act as a mentor. And the fact that Tim and Gwen were able to get through to his bully goes to show you that they went too bad for this kid. But he's not the only one, because there's also Seth Elliott Meyer, who was a fellow member of the GSA with Jacob and was openly bisexual, and he told MSNBC that he expected to hate Tim Walls because he was a coach and was also a hunter, and Seth described himself 
as a punk rock kid who was anti everything. So he expected to just not vibe with walls, but quote, I had a really hard time in high school and I felt like a lot of teachers wanted me to be someone else, Meyer said. Walls, however, was in a minority of teachers who wanted me to be okay with who I was and speak my mind, and whether it was with GSA stuff or anything else, was happy to be questioned and challenged because he wanted to question and challenge things. And this right here is significant because again, we're talking about the late 90s where LGBTQ plus people were pariahs. And whenever a queer teen would come out, they'd have a million different people in their ear telling them to not be themselves. In fact, Seth also explained that he and four other GSA members didn't even want to be seen together because they didn't want to make themselves targets. But Tim Walls told him, listen, how about this? Fuck that. Be yourself. I'm paraphrasing. Tim Walls didn't say that specifically to him, but he said, listen, you should be yourself and don't just be yourself. You should be OK with yourself and stand up for yourself. This is what Tim Walls told him. And at this time, even if you weren't homophobic, you had a social incentive to act like you were a homophobe because any anything short of unequivocally condemning gay people made you suspicious as well. So other teachers were probably not supportive because if they were, people might suspect that they were gay. You know, they could in turn be pariahs, too. But that's that wasn't even a calculation for Tim Walls. He was telling this student, no, you should be yourself. Be proud of yourself. That's amazing. This goes to show you that Tim Walls is just a good person. Now, there's more. Quote, Emily Scott, 41, said she attended GSA meetings in Mankato West from 2000 to 2001 during her junior year because she had a crush on one of the founding members. But she knew Walls best through a biannual trip to China in the summer of 2001 that he organized for students. That trip and something Walls said to her on it changed her life, said Scott, who now lives in St. Paul, Minnesota. We were on a river boat cruise in Gulen, and I turned to Mr. Walls and said, I love this. I love China. I want to do this for the rest of my life, Scott recalled. And then he set up the next 10 years of my life. He said, Emily, here's what you're going to do. You're going to go to University of Wisconsin at Madison and major in Chinese. And then you're going to go to China and get a job. And that is exactly what I did for the next 10 years of my life. And she ended up eventually living in China for 10 years. So Tim Walls put her on a path to fulfill her dream. And to say that a teacher was able to do that, to put their student on a path that helped them achieve what they wanted. I mean, that's what teachers are supposed to do. But these kinds of teachers who are that inspirational, I feel like they're pretty rare. Like I've had teachers that really had an impact on me. But you can tell Tim Walls was one of those teachers where he just went above and beyond. Now, there was also another student. Her name was Larissa Beck. She attended the GSA meetings as a straight ally, which... Credit to her, because again, this was a very homophobic time, and Walls was her 10th grade teacher. Now, she says that she actually bumped into Walls 20 years later at the state capitol when he was the governor, and she said she could not believe that he not only remembered her, but remembered her name. She was touched by it, she said. Now, she was there on behalf of disabled people since she went you know, on to work in disability services. Now, I cannot stress enough, these types of stories are really rare in politics. And I say this because usually when somebody runs for higher office, the only time we hear from people who know them personally from their past is when they want to tell us how evil they were, right? They want to tell us about the terrible things they've done. But Tim Walls has students coming out with these amazing stories so we all know how great of a person he is. That is so rare. And what's great is that he's clearly still the same guy. In the way that he was a mentor to his queer students as a teacher, he's an amazing champion for trans rights now as a governor. But before he was a governor, he was a congressman. And when he ran in 2006, the families that he helped, like Jacob Rayton's family, they were still in contact with him. And they told him, listen, Tim, we know that, you know, you have to be you have to be homophobic, essentially. You don't have to be publicly pro-gay. You can toe the line and support civil unions or whatever, uh, because that's what all Democrats were doing. Even Obama did that, right? So they were saying, we understand that. We know where your heart's at. So Jacob is going to explain how Tim Walls approached this issue while running for Congress, because, again, this was a tough time, and Democrats, like cowards, weren't willing to explicitly endorse same-sex marriage. At least not a lot of them were. Here's how Tim Walls navigated that issue. There's a story, actually, when he ran for Congress the first time. He ran on a position of being for gay marriage in mm -hmm. 2006. This was uh, one of the most anti-gay years in the history of American politics, but he came up for gay marriage. My mom actually said to him, Tim, this is before he had announced that he was going to run, she said, Tim, you don't have to be for gay marriage for our family, but he said, uh, uh, Rondi, um, 
I got to look my gay students in the eye as I'm for gay marriage. And, and so not only was he for gay marriage, uh, there's a story where he's at a high Harley Davidson uh, biker rally and they ask him about helmet laws and they say, Do you th are you for or against helmet laws? And he says, well, you know, I, I think it's stupid not to wear a helmet, but I believe in personal freedom. I don't think uh, I'm not for helmet laws. Probably stupid for me to be eating as many cheeseburgers as I eat, but I'm not for the government telling me how many cheeseburgers to eat. But if the government shouldn't tell you not to wear a helmet and if they shouldn't tell me how many cheeseburgers I, I, should, I should eat, uh, it also shouldn't uh, be able to uh, tell uh, your gay neighbor that they can't get married. I, so I he, love... would, he would go to a Harley Davidson biker debate and talk about gay marriage. So that's just his skill. He has the ability to talk about um, uh, progressive issues and make them in a way that all of us can understand. That is amazing. Remember, Obama, when he was running for president in 2008, even he was against gay marriages. But Tim Walz in 2006 was saying, you know what? No. I'm for it because I'm principled. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to take a position for political expediency. I am going to say what I think. And I think that same-sex people should have equal rights. And I need to stress that he was running in a deep red district and he won. He beat a Republican congressman who was in that seat for 12 years. It was a major upset, and he did this while running on issues like gay marriage. I think it just goes to show you how unnecessary these calculations that politicians make are. Now, ironically, Kamala Harris is suddenly pro-fracking because she wants to win Pennsylvania, and she's also pro-border wall because public opinion has soured on immigrants. But Tim Walls already proved that you don't have to do that. It's a skill issue. You can communicate your case to the American people, and even if they disagree, maybe they'll accept where you're coming from. And I hope that Kamala Harris ends up learning from her running mate, because if the American public doesn't agree with you, it is your job as a leader to bring them to the correct position. And this is important because if politicians capitulated to public opinion on everything, we'd never have same-sex marriage. We'd never have any civil right for that matter. Tim Walls knows this. And in an ad that he cut in 2018, when he was running for governor, uh, he talked about how he got otherwise homophobic people to come around on LGBTQ plus rights. Let's listen. Schools are microcosms of society. And in many cases, it's your last opportunity to share that socioeconomically, racially, and, and across the board. I had students come to me who were concerned that there was an uptick in some bullying towards our gay and lesbian students. And this is in the mid nineties. They asked if I would be interested in helping start a gay straight alliance group. My answer was absolutely. And I recognized my responsibility in that. You have an older, white, straight, married, male football coach who's deeply concerned that these students are treated fairly and that there's no bullying. And the idea that my players would be interested in coming to that and learn and to speak to create a culture in a school that was welcoming, open, and understanding uh, was something Gwen and I always strove for, it. much the same way that as the senior enlisted soldier in Congress, when it came time to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell, my job was to go and convince a dozen or so Republicans that this was the right thing to do. We did that, and I'm very proud of those 15 who joined us. This is done. We have transgender troops serving honorably right now, decorated warriors, and they see their commander in chief belittle them. Brave Americans who wish to serve this nation should be allowed to do so, should be respected, and certainly should never expect to have an attack on their basic patriotisms or their basic humanity come from the White House. It's our pledge here to make sure that doesn't happen. I certainly didn't serve 24 years to watch a fellow veteran be belittled for doing their job, and I will stand in that breach every day. Lots of people are making promises about a progressive agenda. Peggy Flanagan and I are the only team for governor and lieutenant governor who can actually deliver on those progressive promises. And we can because we've done it in the past. Spoiler alert, he absolutely delivered on a progressive agenda as governor. So, yeah, I wanted to talk about his longtime advocacy for LGBTQ plus people because it speaks to a quality that we don't often see with politicians. Courage. He understands that politics is about compromise, yes, but that doesn't mean that you have to compromise your values and sell out certain communities or throw communities under a bus to get power and affect change. That doesn't mean that he has a perfect record or that he's a deity, and it doesn't mean that I won't have disagreements with him if he is vice president, but I think that having someone in power like that who is willing to listen and change, who genuinely seems to want to do good, having somebody in the ear of the president does 
give me a lot of hope. So in conclusion, Tim Walls was pro-LGBTQ before it was cool, and I think that genuinely says a lot about him as a person. Mom. I'm gay. Gays. Gays. Mom. I'm transgender. Gender.